So they keep upgrading us on the storm system. I've installed some cross bracing up here on all four of my corners. I'm trying to prevent any racking. And um, now I'm gonna go underneath and finish those hurricane ties. We've gotten this uh, entire space pretty much cleaned up. Um, and we've been covering up the wood. Uh, Shauna and Kai are trying to get the rest of our house taken care of. I gotta get some ceiling joists up here nailed in and then you know it's just a matter of praying and hoping you did everything you could do a lot of this structure of a building like this isn't completely in place until you got the ceiling on so um it'll be interesting to see how this works but i've got i mean between the sheathing the noggins the cross bracing i'm hoping this is good trucks down there, yeah. We made it through some uh, 70 mile an hour gusts and a few tornadoes in the area and voila, it's doing fine. So in fact, I don't think this building really even budged. So today, I'm going to continue on to my next step, which will be uh, building the stairs. And once I have the stairs in place, it'll make it a lot easier for me to be able to get up there and start working on my ceiling. Once I put in the steps and it's easy to walk up to the second level and they're secure, I can put my OSB board uh, down and that'll give me a workspace to stand on while I frame in my roof. Um, it was still a pretty windy day, so I'm hoping that by the time I get up there with OSB boards and start working on that, the wind will die down a little bit. I don't want one of those to come flying off. Now for the steps, I had originally purchased pre-made steps, but they weren't going to be big enough for this space. So what I'm going to do is cut some 2x12s. I have three of them, and I'm going to cut those into my my new stairs my new steps and then put my double header up at the top um, i need to add a six, uh, two by six on the side here and hopefully you know i'll get all this built in and secured pretty easily i'm, I'm not sure because i haven't cut steps before so this is going to be a little fun but i, I don't think it'll be that hard once i create a stencil going up uh, it should be fairly simple after that so I'm going to get to work on this and see how this turns out. Okay, so when I tried to install my stairs, um, they were going way too far over. They're going to hit my the wall of my gambr gambrel roof. And so what I've decided to do is build a step on my stairs itself and 
and that way I have a little more height before I put in my steps uh, to go the rest of the way, and I'm hoping that that'll close the gap at the top a little bit. Now this stairs isn't exactly to code. I should have about five or six inches here, and then uh, on the next step, five or six inches, but um, sometimes you just have to, to work with what you've got. I don't have a lot of room here, and because this is an agricultural building, I don't have to necessarily be at, you know, code on something like a stairs. I could have done a stairs at 30 inches if I wanted to. Um, so this will work, and, you know, hopefully I'll be able to get this, um, I'm, I'm hoping this will, will take my, my steps up high enough that it won't be an issue. So that's what I'm working on now. Um, I kind of have... The way I set this up, I've got a little bit of uh, my, my, my level over on this side, and now I'm, I put in a couple braces, and I'm trying to just slowly build this thing up till it's about the, the height it needs to be for the, for the steps to, to continue up. Been a bit of a process trying to calculate this out and figure it out, and um, again, it's not gonna be perfect, but it's a workshop stairs, so. Whatever happens, happens. I already put this platform in, and I'm trying to work around that. And it might be a little funky, but I'm going to try and turn it and make it look as good as possible as I bring it up. So, and, and actually, I'm still at uh, 36 inches right here. So really, it's just a little bit of a, a corner that's going to be a little messed up uh, as I take this higher. So, I'm going to crawl up here and lift this up. I need you to make sure that this part is on this line and this part is flat across here. Okay. Do you want me to hold it while you're getting up? Huh? You know, this line isn't straight. It is straight. The board's not straight. Do you want it to be all the way against this? Yeah. Lift it a little more. The line is the middle of those two boards. Now oh, tell me when it's level. It was level. Go up. Up more. Stop. Uh, yeah, that's like center. The last step is going to be flush with the wall. Why don't you just make it just here, to this step? Because this floor is up here, and this, this board is at the same level as that board across, that we came across here. Yeah, so then you just cut off the last one. Oh, but you've got, a, you've got an angled... Are you doing an angled ceiling, or are you having it go straight up from there? That's going to go straight up. So okay, so you're good. Now this... Where you have, where I've got this, is literally between these two. It's not on this line. You could come forward if you'd like a quarter of a quarter of an inch. I'd rather have a tight space up here because then at least I can figure it out. Turn and just step up or something. Okay.
So I had a couple comments of people asking when we were putting this up in the storm, uh, we put our OSB boards going vertical. And the other thing I did was I put the, the side with the lines facing inside of the building. And I thought I'd explain to you guys why we did that real quick. Number one, by going uh, vertical instead of horizontal, I was able to fit these boards in with very minimal cutting and do it very quickly. And so that uh, moved it along pretty quick. Now, when it comes to shear, it is true that if you lay the boards horizontal, you're gonna have a much stronger resistance to wind shear. However, these are 1932s. And so with a 1932, it's not necessary to install them horizontal. You can do it vertical because you've got plenty of shear protection uh, on a building with a 1932. If you look at these boards, on one side, you've got a very rough kind of soft um, finish. And on the other side, you've got more of a glue-like uh, finish or, and, it, and it's a little smoother. Normally, boards like this would be used for flooring, but because we put them on our walls, uh, you know, the, the side that would be the most protected facing the underside is the side that we put on the outside. I don't need guidelines to know where my nails go. Uh, it's just as easy for me to find the stud placement at the top and bottom, throw a quick pencil line in. A lot of times I could just eyeball it all the way down and I don't have a problem hitting my studs. For those of you who do have a problem hitting your studs, you might not want to do it this way. You might want to keep it flipped around. It's not going to make that big of a difference structurally, but because I'm building this building by myself, I'm trying to, and, I, and it's going to be a while before I get the tie back on the outside, I'm trying to give myself as much protection as I can on the wood that I've installed until I get to the point where I have a roof on it and I'm wrapping the tie back. If I put the tie back around right now, water's going to get behind the tie back and it's going to be even worse. So it's kind of a, you know, a, you have to think through these construction projects. You know, what is to code, what isn't to code. A 1932 board is a pretty thick board. You don't have to install it horizontally. You can install it vertically and it's perfectly fine.